Greetings and welcome to this week's edition of 401k Real Talk. This is Fred Barstein, contributing editor at wealthmanagement.com's RPA Edge and CEO at Trow, TPSU and 401k TV. I review all of last week's stories and select the five most important and interesting ones providing open, honest and candid discussion you will not get anywhere else. So let's get real. First story, private equity has its eye on retirement accounts. KKR recently raised $2 billion from IRA investors on Fidelity and Schwab's platform for their infrastructure conglomerates. Traditional institutional investor money has been drying up as interest rates rise and firms look to diversify. With 11.5 trillion in IRAs and almost 800 billion rolling out of DC plans, which has close to 10 trillion itself, KKR will not be the only PE firm tapping retirement plans as a way to capture assets of the mass affluent. And while not available, able to be offered as a standalone investment in DC plans, many experts predict PE will get a healthy share of the sleeves and professionally managed investments like target date funds, just as they do with DB plans, offering non-correlated investments previously available only to high net worth and institutional investors. Next story. While many experts may argue about whether ERISA litigation has improved or hurt DC plans, no one will argue that they have profoundly affected them. In Q3 alone, 58 cases have been filed, settled, or decided. Some, like Brad Campbell, ERISA attorney and former DOO official, argue that these lawsuits have perpetuated fiduciary myths that index funds and lower fees reduce risk. Others argue that they have significantly reduced fees and created a higher level of scrutiny and monitoring by plan sponsors, as well as more investment options and less proprietary funds and company stock. Some believe that these lawsuits thwart innovation, a theory not shared by most institutional consultants in a recent study. They have created more record keeper RFPs and soon for advisors and consultants and have driven some larger plans to join PEPs. With 50% of 1 billion plus plans likely to be sued and litigation sure to hit smaller plans and RPAs, good or bad, the genie is out of the bottle. Next story, though assets in HSAs have ballooned to $116 billion, according to a Morningstar report, with fees declining and investment choices improving, many are still disappointed about their lack of in involvement. Morningstar rate cites the lack of transparency, ease of use, and high fees as inhibitors to the triple tax benefits. HSAs that HSAs offer that are only available in high deductible healthcare plans. The concern is that few participants see HSAs as an investment account, which may require more education awareness with both plan sponsors and participants as wealth, retirement, and benefits continue to converge at the workplace. Next story. Dave Gray, work, head of workplace retirement products and platforms at Fidelity Investments, discusses blockchain, the new portability service network, and a growing threat to fiduciary advisors in a revealing conversation with wealthmanagement.com. Gray explains the difference between blockchain which has great potential for the industry to safely work with DC participants and cryptocurrency. Though few plans and RPAs are adopting crypto, Dave warns, love it, hate it, learn it. 
the Portability Service Network, which now includes the top six DC record keepers covering 80% of participants, allow for frictionless transfer of accounts when participants change jobs. It also establishes the first data exchange protocol, which could pave the way for other services like retirement income. And as RPA search for additional revenue as planned fees continue to decline precipitously, proprietary products and services for which they are paid extra pose the same dangers that drove brokers out of the DC market 10 to 15 years ago. Finally, though target day funds are garnering most new DC contributions and the industry is a buzz about managed accounts, plan sponsors and RPAs still need to make important decisions about their investment lineup. In my column this week on wealthmanagement.com, I review the need to customize the menu based on workplace demographics, index versus active funds, the optimal number of choices, target day funds versus managed accounts as the default, private label multi-manager options, and CITs versus mutual funds lots of choices and opportunities for RPAs to show their value. So those were the most important stories from the past week. I listed a few others I thought were worth reading covering Schwab's response to complaints about the TD integration at their recent impact conference, the potential danger of a federal retirement option, a Cerulli report on managed accounts, and FinTech candidly offering emergency savings. Please let me know if I missed anything or if you have any comments. Otherwise, I look forward to speaking with you next week on 401k Real Talk.